Good morning, this is Rich. Good morning, Rich. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. How are you, Wendy? I'm doing well, thank you. Ah, great. Thank you. Uh, any problems with- Good morning, Rich. Hi. Oh, oh good. Uh, hi, Rich. I'm, I'm good. I'm joining as a proxy for Rambish. Just wanted to say hi. Oh, good morning. Uh, and it's uh, uh, Kit. That's correct. Oh, very good. Thank you for joining us. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, and it's it's just after the the top of the hour, so we'll get started. And uh, I do know a couple uh, of our members are going to be running late, and they let me know, which is fantastic. So uh, so first of all, uh, as we always do, uh, well, first of all, good morning uh, and happy Friday to everybody. Uh, appreciate you joining us uh, this morning. Um, uh, as we always do, uh, I just want to remind everyone that this is a recorded uh, meeting. Uh, and we also uh, want to make sure that uh, everybody is aware of our antitrust uh, information as it relates to the organization. And so uh, I've posted that here. Uh, you should see in front of you the antitrust policy notice. Feel free to read through it. The upshot, of course, uh, means that uh, just be a good person. <laughs> so, so that's that. Um, and I, it is a little bit early on the call, but uh, I, I would like to uh, uh, open this up to introductions for anyone that may be new on the call uh, or, uh, or uh, want to talk a little bit more about what they do uh, as it relates to blockchain technologies in healthcare. Uh, and so uh, we, we just heard a little bit from Ankit uh, serving as a proxy for Ravish. So Ankit, do you want to talk a little bit about yourself? Indeed. Uh, good morning, everybody. This is my first time in this meeting. My name is Ankit Jain, and I'm serving as a proxy for Rish. Uh, I have been working in the healthcare industry for a while, primarily as a systems analyst and a business analyst. I have worked in the field of technology development, too. I joined the pair subgroup of um, our SEG uh, about a month and a half ago uh, and was also able to attend the meetup that was held for the pair subgroup last month. And I've worked with Ravish in the past and he um, invited me to join the group. So I'm excited Excellent. about uh, everything that's going on. Oh, outstanding. Uh, and so do you work with uh, Ravish, uh, Ravish at, uh, at Joget then? Uh, a little bit, yes. Oh, very good, okay. Uh, and is, uh, is that the company that you work with then? No, I, I work with Moksha Technologies. Ah, okay, and how do you spell that? M-O-K-X-A. M-O-K-X-A. Okay, very good. They were one of the sponsors for, uh, for the meetup. And... Outstanding. Very good. Uh, uh, yeah. Thank you so much, uh, and of course, welcome. Uh, great to have you on the call. Uh, well, thank you. Anybody else on the call that's that's new and wants uh, uh, to to take the time to introduce themselves? Okay, sounds fine. All right. Well, uh, if you are fairly new, uh, welcome. And I do see uh, Stephen on the call. Good morning, Stephen. And uh, and and Kenneth. Uh, Ken, I think uh, East Coast. Ken. Good morning to you as well. Thank you. All righty. Uh, well, let's let's sort of kick things off then. Um, so we do have a, a, quite a number of things happening uh, right now. Uh, we have a, an up, upcoming uh, blockchain uh, health summit that's happening in October. Um, I think I have a slide here. So uh, so if you haven't had a chance to take a look at that, uh, feel free to do so. Uh, and if anyone is uh, happening to attend the meeting. Uh, very few of us are familiar with this particular conference, and so it's always great to, to have someone uh, from membership uh, participate and then bring back to the team uh, information that may be uh, useful for, uh, for membership. And of course, it's always great to learn where the really good, high, highly valued conferences are. And so uh, if you happen to be attending, uh, please let me know, and you know, we could uh, set something up so that we can have you uh, get back uh, with a bit of a, a trip report. Alrighty, as well, uh, we've got a global blockchain summit happening in Westminster, Colorado. 
Uh, and that's coming up at the beginning of October. And our very own Wendy uh, will be on that uh, at that summit. Uh, Wendy, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yes, um, sure. This, uh, the Global Blockchain Summit is, it offers a wide variety of topics. It's not just healthcare. And um, there are, uh, trying to figure out how best to feature this, there are going to be, um, I'm going to be speaking on two panels. Um, one, I'll be presenting about regulatory compliance and legal considerations for, and I'm going to go through a specific case study with an attorney, um, Michael Henson, and um, also serving on a panel for the future of healthcare and blockchain. It's um, it's a fairly small summit. That last year there were like maybe 75 to 100 people, so there's a great opportunity for networking. There are great vendors, and um, just great um, educational experience. Outstanding. Uh, and now, uh, is this part of the, 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 the broader GBA, the Global Blockchain, I think it's association? It's not officially affiliated with GBA. However, the person who is found, who founded this conference is the chapter leader for the, the Denver chapter leader for GBA. Mm -hmm. And so um, there will definitely be some GBA speakers and I'm a member of GBA too, and uh, there will um, you'll you'll definitely hear a flavor of GBA, but it's not officially sanctioned by GBA. Gotcha. Okay, I, I was just just sort of tipped off by the the title of the of the the conference, and so I was I was just curious about that. Alrighty, uh, very good. And then we also have the uh, Convergence to Accelerate conference, which is happening in Boston also in October. So the, the October is going to be a busy month. And in fact, you can sort of infer that uh, if you're going to be on the East Coast uh, for either the New York or the, uh, the, the, the Boston uh, conference, you could probably shuttle back and forth. Uh, so the, uh, the, the Converge uh, to Accelerate conference uh, is going to be featuring uh, Tony Sen Senja, I think is how her name is pronounced, uh, or Senaj, I think is how her name is pronounced. Uh, and Tori will be speaking uh, at an upcoming um, uh, HCC uh, general meeting, uh, I think in the next couple of, if not next, uh, this next uh, general meeting, then the one afterwards. So we, we'll, she'll be joining us and talking more about uh, both the, the conference as well as the, uh, the publication that she, she puts out uh, for, uh, for blockchain in, in healthcare development. Hey, Rich. Yes. This is Wendy. I learned how to pronounce her last name. Oh, yay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's Senai. Senai. Tony oh, Senai. interesting. Oh. Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. Excellent. And I will also be speaking in the, at this conference as well. And I will be on a panel uh, about whether healthcare is ready for blockchain. Oh, very cool. Well, I would hope the answer is yes, but <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to go too far into that. Yes. Uh, Will anyone else be there? I guess it may perhaps not. So, so uh, you know, I'll put you on the spot, Wendy, for both, uh, both the conferences that you'll be speaking at. It would be great if you can sort of come back to us with something of a trip report. Uh, however, however formal or informal you'd like to make that, that's fine by me. Uh, but it's always great to get a sense for what the conference sort of the value is because uh, there are so many conferences that are out there that it'd always be great to get a, oh, there you are there. Uh, it'd always be great to get sort of a sense for uh, whether it's something we want to, you know, put on our, our, on our agendas going forward. So absolutely, uh, we can talk more uh, down the road a bit, but uh, sure. yeah, fantastic. Great. Great to hear. Okay, uh, any other uh, community announcements? Uh, they don't necessarily have to be conferences, but anything that may be happening that you'd like to share uh, with the community here, uh, feel free to do so. Uh, anyone would like to uh, uh, talk a little bit right now? Uh, typically, we could use Rocket Chat uh, to communicate, or of course, the, the, the broader email listserv that we use. That, that listserv will go out to our full membership, which is uh, over 1,000 members, and that's international. Uh, but if you'd like to share something on the call today, feel free to do so. Okay. 
Uh, well, I'll, I'll sort of mention something in passing. It's very interesting uh, and it is r somewhat relevant. Uh, I, I was approached by a, uh, by a, a television producer. Uh, they produce a TV show called Advantages. It's on CNBC. Tends to be, uh, uh, it circulates around technology uh, uh, change and uh, it's hosted by, of all people, Ted Danson. Um, and so I honestly originally thought that this was something of a joke. And, and I, uh, I responded uh, as much saying, Are, is this for real? Uh, and uh, so the answer is yes, it is. Uh, and, I, and I had a tele, uh, my, my first sort of uh, t uh, telecon with the producer, I think it was this, about this time last week. Um, and uh, it appears that we may be going forward uh, with this. Um, and so uh, what I'd like to do is if, if there's anyone on the call that has an interest in maybe uh, participating in this, please let me know. The, the, the general gist of this is that they're looking at uh, trying to understand the use of blockchain technologies in healthcare. Uh, and what I'm looking for are, are potential uh, organizations or companies that may want to be uh, part of this. Uh, I'm looking at uh, probably three or four other companies uh, that, that might be involved. I know Microsoft uh, will, uh, seems to be interested, as does uh, Change Healthcare. Um, and so we're, we're just trying to get a sense for who might be included in this as well. Uh, my understanding, well, you don't get paid for this. Uh, and my understanding is this is due to air sometime in early next year. Uh, uh, so first quarter of 2020. Uh, and it, it is unclear, this is all very uh, speculative at this point, it's unclear as to whether or not this is truly going to happen. There are other, other folks that the producers are interviewing as well, uh, and it may not be specifically in the healthcare space, uh, but uh, I, I, I think I told a pretty compelling story. Uh, but if, if you're interested, feel free to contact me uh, and we can you know, sort of go forward with that. Again, uh, it's all purely speculative at this point. but. Uh, I immediately thought of the of this uh, of this group, uh, thinking that uh, boy, we have tremendous resources uh, through uh, through membership, and so I, I thought I'd bring it up uh, here on our call, just because those are the people that that generally are more active um, uh, in membership, and so I, I thought I'd share that here. Okay, uh, anyone else uh, wanna talk a little bit about uh, something that may be related to the healthcare industry and blockchain technologies in specific? Alrighty. Oh, Rich, this is yes. Wendy. Um, sure. Did, uh, there was a public publication in Coinbase this morning and uh, Heather Flannery posted it on LinkedIn about how Consensus will be using more, uh, will be partnering with Hyperledger. And so there was a flurry of posts saying that some people were going to join our Hyperledger Healthcare Special Interest Group. Oh, outstanding. Well, good to hear that. Uh, and if there's anyone that happens to be on the call uh, right now, <laughs> feel free to identify yourself and, and, and welcome, of course. Please let us know more. If any of you have seen the poster, can speak more knowledgeably than I could. I read it in the car on the way here, but I don't know anything more about it. Can anyone else speak to it? What site did you say it was on? Um, on link uh, Coinbase. Post, uh, Heather posted up on, on Heather. Heather, and Heather posted the details on LinkedIn. Yeah, and that's Heather Flannery of Consensus, and so uh, you may want to, if you if you if you're not tied to her or you want to follow her, that might be one way to do it because Heather is very active in that community, uh, and so uh, she, yeah, she's sort of a connection, uh, sort of the bridge, uh, in some respects, uh, to that side of of the of the healthcare world as it relates to Ethereum, and and Consensus specifically. Um. Alrighty, uh, and I, the, I had a thought, and then it just escaped me. So, uh, so, so curses. <laughs> Alrighty, okay. Well, let's let's move forward then. Um, and uh, uh, oh, 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 oh. So I, I just figured out what the what it was. Okay. So, so related to what you were saying, Wendy, uh, there was uh, some sort of chatter uh, over on the um, uh, sort of the executive side of, of Hyperledger as it relates to some new projects that may be coming along that are, are looking to, to relate 
increasingly closer with Ethereum, which is really good. So, uh, so we have uh, uh, an association of sort between Hyperledger and Ethereum. Uh, and so that, that affiliation uh, appears to be uh, continuing to grow. And in fact, uh, what you're describing, Wendy, it seems to be much, very much in line with, with some, of the, uh, some of the back and forth that I've been hearing uh, on some of the other channels uh, and listservs. And so this, this is a, in, in whole, in toto, this sounds like a very uh, sort of good strategic move where both organizations are, are actively working together. Okay. So let's, uh, let's move ahead to uh, subgroup updates. Uh, for those that uh, may be new, uh, we have uh, three uh, subgroups, uh, and those subgroups are really very, very uh, focused in, in their purpose uh, as it relates to the topic. Uh, we have a patient group, a pair subgroup, and then we have a, a fairly new healthcare interoperability subgroup that Stephen will be talking about momentarily. Uh, Dennis, uh, who leads our patient uh, member subgroup, uh, let me know that he's, he's a, running a little bit late on the call. So uh, he did send along some details uh, on what they've been doing. They've been very active lately, which is phenomenal. Uh, so you can see up on the screen some of the notes uh, that have been posted regarding uh, uh, Dennis. Oh, and Dennis is just, just now getting on the call. Timing is everything. Uh, so, Dennis, when you get yourself settled, uh, just let me know and, and I'll hand over to you. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to loop back over to uh, Ankit. And Ankit, do you want to talk a little bit about the pair subgroup? Indeed. Good morning, everybody, again. Um, I'll start with the, I'm not sure Ravish may have provided an update uh, about this before, but this relates to what we've been doing in the past couple of weeks. So, uh, I'll start with the meetup that we held in the greater Baltimore area for the uh, payer subgroup um, on July of 18th. And we, we had some representatives from, uh, uh, from the payer side. We also had Heather Dahl, who is the CEO of Sovereign. Uh, they use Indy uh, for, for the Sovereign identity. And we, we had about uh, 18 to 20 participants. So we had a very meaningful uh, discussion where we, uh, we for people who were curious about blockchain, we talked about that. And then uh, we talked about how it, some healthcare use cases, we talked about Hyperledger, um, and we, talk, we talked about engagement in general and how um, blockchain can transform the industry. Um, and then since then, uh, we have had one more pair subgroup uh, meeting. We have been engaging new members and we are working towards uh, finalizing a use case in the pair subgroup um, that we can bring to the table. Last week's meeting had to be canceled because uh, Ravish was traveling. Um, so summary, just engaging new members, uh, working on the white paper, and working on finalizing a use case. Excellent. Thank you, Ankit. Uh, and uh, any, any uh, conversation about uh, sort of the, the overall status of the white paper, uh, due date, uh, anything to that order? Uh, I am not aware of it right now. I know we have talked about, um, it, on the meetings I have been on, we have only talked about increased contribution to it. I know that there have been updates to it. I'm not aware of a timeline around it. Um, I, I, am aware, uh, I am aware that we, we are hoping to finalize the use case within the next month or so. Okay, very good. Excellent. Thank you so much I for, can. for the update. Yeah. No problem. Thank you. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, let's let's go back to uh, to Dennis, and then we'll go to Stephen because uh, Stephen's got some good information he wants to share. But uh, Dennis, good morning and welcome. Good morning. How are you doing, guys? Very good. Lovely. Um, just a short uh, summary from our side. Uh, we trying to fix the scope uh, with the patient data. And uh, as I communicated with Rich, uh, we try to uh, fix it on the clinical trials. And we decided also for a treatment, diabetes and with wearables. So this will be the uh, title for the use case. And we want to focus in the consent process after we analyze the clinical trial uh, with 
patient recruitment, site selection, and study monitoring process, because we think this is the most repeating and the most crucial uh, process uh, in the clinical trials, together with the protocol changes. And with the new uh, support to the group, we also be uh, uh, attention about the bridge model for the clinical trials data model. We want to take it as a reference. And for the data transfer within, between the electronic hospital record or the data uh, from the providers to the electronic data collection capture, uh, we want to use the uh, standard uh, smart on fire. And we also want to separate the data and the process execution on the board. Uh, on the blockchain. These are the main uh, decisions we made. And uh, we also want to uh, participate in different, uh, in different uh, uh, standard, uh, AP standard uh, definitions. So uh, we contacted with the clinical pipe, pipe who is already uh, providing the process for the uh, patient uh, recruitment and the patient uh, uh, consent. We also uh, updating and exchanging uh, different topics. And based on that, one of our team members uh, wanted to create a, a GitHub for the project. And uh, he has already the, uh, the, the uh, the work for the bridge model reference he already made and so we want to uh, go to github uh, and uh, start our first uh, discussions about the architecture and uh, we also find out the patient data and the whole clinical trial process it has similarities with the health monitoring process we want to also use the experience of uh, Patricia of, uh, of Pat uh, from Patty, Patty. and uh, so we meet uh, in the last two weeks three times, uh, additional to the uh, subgroup meetings. There is a, a big motivation, and we after we want to fix the scope, uh, after we fix the scope, uh, we also want to look into different supports from different uh, sites. And you are also very much welcome to join us. It's, it's very exciting. And uh, it's, 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 it, there is really a big uh, support from our team members at the moment. And we, are also, we also want to welcome any uh, support additional to that. So, Outstanding. Sure. Yeah, and, and, uh, and, and I'll work with you, Dennis, uh, on, on getting uh, uh, access to the, uh, the Hyperledger Labs, uh, which is really the sort of incubator on GitHub for Hyperledger projects, and so we'll work through that. But uh, phenomenal. Excellent work, and thank you so much. You're very much welcome. Okay, uh, Stephen, you want to talk uh, about the Healthcare Interoperability Subgroup, or the HIS? Yes. Uh, good morning, everybody. I have just a few minutes. I have another meeting. I have to run to hard stop. So uh, we uh, have uh, finished the initial work that uh, required for launch of the work group. Initially, uh, the thought was to launch next Wednesday. I think that's too little time to give everybody notice. It's a hard time because here in the United States, we have uh, Labor Day on the 2nd, which is the following Monday. Um, but I think I'll push the initial meeting off until next Wednesday to give people more time to coordinate their schedules. Um, it's only an initial meeting. Pretty much will be introductions going through what the milestones and goals of the work group are. But uh, yeah, I think that we'll meet on a two week cadence, at least initially, um, and begin to uh, drill through the, the, uh, the requirements for building uh, clinical knowledge artifacts uh, to distributed ledger that are semantically interoperable. 
So yeah, long time. I know everybody's going well. This <laughs> anticlimactic, but uh, yeah, it did take a long time. I've been. I, I'm sure everybody else has been super, super busy. I'm still not 100 percent prepared, but uh, <clears throat> uh, it's not going to get any better. I don't think so. I would like to, to just announce that they will be launching. Um, yeah, third uh, or fourth of, of next month. Uh, absolutely, and and there is an an awful lot of anticipation surrounding this particular kickoff uh, because of of the content, um, and uh, you know, we I know we've been going back and forth in email, um, and so if you get to a point or when you get to a point, Stephen, where uh, you feel like uh, everything is ready to go, uh, I'd be happy to sort of you know uh, work with you to to get the announcement out. Uh, I in theory uh, we can we can make this announcement to the full full membership group. Uh, through listserv. I think that might be one approach. Uh, I also uh, do know that uh, over the past uh, couple of months, we've been collecting names of, of folks who are interested in participating in this. And so, you know, you can maybe do a soft start if you want to go that route as well. So I'll, I'll leave that to you. Well, I think I'll, I think we just launch it. Uh, I have a, about eight members names uh, and email addresses. Uh, I'll forward those in a uh, email. So we can coordinate that. If you have additional names, then you can add those, but post everything to the listserv and additionally to CC those individuals who have already expressed interest. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah. Let, let me know and then we'll go from there. Uh, and so is it next week, Wednesday, that, that's the plan or what was the, the final decision? So next week, Wednesday was the initial plan. I don't think that gives everybody enough time to coordinate their schedules. So I'd like to do it the week after on Wednesday. <clears throat> okay. So that would be the f September 4th then? Does that yeah. sound right? Uh -huh. Okay. Very good. All right. Well, and, and thank you again, Stephen. I know uh, you've been putting an awful lot of work in it. The, the document that you've been putting together uh, has, has sort of matured over time. And so I'm, I'm very excited uh, and very hopeful. I, I imagine that uh, we'll, we'll get an awful lot of traction on this going forward. Uh, I can even tell you that uh, in, in conversations that I've had uh, here in the Seattle area, uh, I mentioned in passing uh, when we talk about interoperability, uh, the issue as it relates to semantic interoperability because uh, most people think about syntactic op interoperability uh, and they don't think about the semantics, the context of the issue. Uh, and they get very interested very quickly because my suspicion is most people just don't think about that. Uh, so this, I think, is going to be an interesting topic uh, to focus around because it is in part technical, uh, but uh, largely uh, the, this, on the semantic side of the equation, uh, this is still a very, very difficult uh, problem to solve. And so yep. uh, I, I, I just, I anticipate a lot of interest around this. Okay, well, we'll see. Uh, I'll, I'll send you an email, we'll get this ready. Uh, I think everything's pretty much ready. I'm not gonna make any more changes to the website. Uh, maybe do some touch up over the weekend, but uh, yeah, I think it's about ready to go. Yeah, and in fact, yeah, I'll bring that up here. So, so people that are interested, we've got the charter all lined up and ready to go. And so, yeah, phenomenal. Very good. Okay. okay. And, and thank you, Stephen. Have a great weekend. I know you're off to another meeting. So thank you so much. Thanks, everybody. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye. Okay, uh, and so uh, so those were our three subgroups, uh, and you'll, you sort of get a sense for that for those of you that, that are newer to the, to the group. Uh, as well, we also have ad, ad hoc teams that we uh, we sort of, fa sort of facilitate here as well. Uh, we have a Rick, uh, wiki redesign team that Ravish tends to uh, tends to lead. Uh, that is really sort of an ongoing issue, which uh, really relates to our Confluence uh, wiki pages here. Uh, and so, if you happen to be on the call and you have an interest in uh, and some level of experience with Confluence, we are always looking for people to help out with. Uh, sort of managing the design, the overall design of this, uh, of, of our particular um, Confluence wiki site, as well as the, the other pages and the other uh, uh, special interest groups and working groups as well. Uh, and the, the general reason for this is we're looking for a consistent design that uh, we can all use uh, so that if new members are coming into the Hyperledger community, uh, they may not necessarily have an interest in healthcare, uh, or maybe it's peripheral or incidental, uh, but they want to move between special interest groups, 
uh, and even some other of the working groups, which tend to be more technical, uh, then uh, we want to have a way to have a design that, that really uh, makes that ease uh, uh, kind of a primary issue. So if, if you happen to be on the call and you are a Confluence uh, person, please contact me. Uh, we, could, we could get you set up with helping to, to work some of the design issues there. Alrighty, uh, we have an academic research team uh, and that's sort of gone sideways for quite some time. Uh, Adrian Berg is our lead for that. Uh, he's been uh, busy, uh, I, I believe he's still on academic leave uh, or something to that effect. I'll have to double check on that. Um, and, uh, and so we, we may, I may take this off the list for now just because it's been very quiet for the past couple of months. Uh, we may pick that up again. I know uh, Wendy, you and I have worked uh, aspects of this uh, research team as well. Uh, and the, the sort of uh, the, the, the intersection there is the academic component of that, uh, which really spun out uh, the, uh, the use case development team, which now, Wendy, you, you lead. Uh, you want to give us an update on some of the work that's happening there? Yeah, so our our obstacle for moving forward had been obtaining templates from the Linux Foundation so that we could best coordinate with them to promote our use cases and to feature our use cases on the Hyperledger Linux Foundation websites. And they kept postponing the meetings, but there's a meeting on Monday afternoon where or morning where I hope to participate and learn more about what templates they could provide to us so that we can maintain the same look and structure and that way they be better integrated into um, the Hyperledger and Linux Foundation system. So more to come probably in the next meeting. Yeah, and thank you, Wendy, for sort of pursuing that. Uh, it, uh, it has been, <laughs> it's been an interesting ride and to be really honest, I think part of this is uh, we're, we're really sort of uh, stirring up uh, part of the community leadership folks. Um, the way that Hyperledger works at a very high level is that it's part of Linux Foundation. And so there are an awful lot of shared resources between Hyperledger and the Linux Foundation, which, which tends to be a clearinghouse for all the other projects that Linux Foundation hosts. Uh, and so, you know, every so often we'll ask a question and, uh, and it, I think it, it it tends to uh, tends to put people uh, back on their heels a little bit, and they go, "Well, gee, <laughs> that's a, that's why are they asking such a hard question?" So, uh, I but I, I am absolutely convinced, and I know you are too, Wendy, that this is uh, this is of, of value uh, and has a lot of merit in measure because really what we're looking to do uh, is develop templates that are uh, of immediate use uh, that can be applicable uh, throughout. Uh, the the community uh, and that are consistent and that's probably one of the big issues with use cases is they don't get they don't they don't find uh, the suitable context uh, and so uh, they, they they're very hard to sort of understand and so having a, a common template and a way to do this in a consistent uh, and and sort of regular manner makes an awful lot of sense and so I'm happy to see that happen um, Wendy, do you want to talk for, for newer folks that are on the call? You want to talk a little bit about what, what you're doing within the team? Oh, sure. Uh, so we had identified as a healthcare special interest group that, um, that there was a lot of interest in learning more about practical use cases. And these are the types of questions that team members get at conferences, for example. Rich had shared at the last HIMSS conference that people kept coming up to the table and asking for information about how blockchain can be better utilized in healthcare. And we wanted to give them a document that they could walk away with, think about, maybe even bring back to their organizations. We uh, met as a small team uh, of volunteers with comprised of members of the special interest group to identify how we would present use cases and um, which use cases that we found to be most pertinent right now. And I can't remember all of them off the top of my head, but I know that one was uh, drug supply chain, another was credentialing, um, can't remember the rest, but uh, we also identified that we, we wanted to keep it within the scope of um, 
what Hyperledger has already been putting out there, which is a template that's about five pages. So it's not real deep, but it contains enough detail to get people interested and excited and wanting to learn more. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that's that's spot on. Uh, the, the real driver is really coming from uh, fr from folks uh, outside of the organization who really want to understand how blockchain technologies are used and, and the way that they are asking these questions uh, is by way of, of trying to understand if there are use cases available that they can look at. Uh, and so in some respects, uh, you know, the, the value of a use case is really understanding uh, a concept in in context, and that's the real strength of that. Uh, and so uh, one of the things that we've noticed is that we, we simply are just efficient in that respect. Uh, early, early on, and this is several years ago, we, we developed uh, some very uh, uh, rudimentary use cases that were, they had very little structure to them and, and there, was no, there was no real use to it. And so I think the approach this time around is much more formalized, much more mature. And, uh, and the fact that, uh, Wendy, you particularly uh, have an interest in driving this uh, with your background, uh, that, that's so, so closely wedded uh, to, to academia is going to be extremely helpful because we have so many people in the healthcare industry who are really sort of driven uh, with the requirement that uh, anything that is done is uh, sort of done in a very uh, process-oriented and objective manner. And so uh, the use cases that, uh, that this team is putting together are going to really sort of emphasize that aspect of, of you know, that level of rigor. Uh, and so I'm very happy to see that this, this moves forward, and, and I'm very hopeful for that meeting uh, next week, Monday. So thank you for that, Wendy. Okay, any thoughts, comments as we move uh, into some old business? So, uh, so uh, at last meeting, uh, I, I brought up a couple of uh, different uh, healthcare funding opportunities, uh, and those are listed here. Um, we can, I'll walk through them very briefly, but uh, I touched on them uh, a little bit more at our last meeting. The, the upshot is, uh, in general, uh, we, we occasionally have uh, opportunities, uh, primarily here in the U.S., but that's not exclusively true. Uh, UNICEF, for example, is international. Uh, HHS and NIH are both uh, U.S. Uh, national organizations. Um, what what uh, occurs is that we we oftentimes have the opportunity as uh, as uh, smaller organizations, smaller companies, uh, to respond to what are called uh, uh, SIBRs and SIDRs. And uh, oh gosh, I can never remember. I should really write this down. Uh, SIBRs are small business, uh, blah blah blah, somethings and sitters are the equivalent, but they include academia in, in, the, in the mix. Uh, and uh, the way that the government does this is they generate uh, uh, opportunities uh, called solicitations, uh, and I'm listing some of those here. Uh, these uh, are not necessarily all healthcare related necessarily, uh, or I should say not necessarily blockchain related, but the idea would be to use, uh, uh, possibly use blockchain technologies as the solution for the uh, for the uh, for the problem that's being presented by way of the solicitation, so uh, HHS uh, is is pretty significant in size, and so uh, what you see here are uh, listings for some uh, opportunities. Uh, again, these are either sibbers or sitters, and so uh, my background uh, is is uh, mostly government uh, with some healthcare. Uh, we've done an awful lot of proposal writing as it relates to both uh, Sibbers and Sitters, and I can tell you, Sibber uh, is really uh, just the, just you as a small business, and the definition of small business is, I believe, still uh, 150 employees or fewer, which is pretty significant. Uh, you know, <laughs> a company with 100 folks uh, to me is not a small business, but well, that's okay. Um, uh, and then a sitter uh, is, is in, engaging, that small business engaging an academic institution. And so that's a little bit more difficult to do because there's a little bit more coordination that has to happen there. So, uh, so what we're looking at here are, are the solicitations through uh, HHS. Uh, as well, we have NA, uh, NIH, um, uh, National Institutes of Health. They also have uh, solicitations available, and so here's the listing for that as well, and feel free to, to peruse these uh, as you see fit. And then finally, uh, the one that I wanted to bring up also was UNICEF. Uh, UNICEF uh, being international, 
uh, has opportunities uh, that generally focus around uh, helping children, and, and that's their mission, and so that's where the focus tends to be. Um, uh, but the great thing here is it's international, and so if you have an interest in participating uh, uh, with, again, in theory, with a blockchain solution to solve problems as it relates to, to children, perhaps healthcare as it relates to children, uh, UNICEF may be the way to go. Uh, and the way that UNICEF works is you, you have to have sort of a small business already pretty well established, a startup established, uh, and they're willing to fund uh, the idea if the idea is appropriate to the mission statement for UNICEF. Uh, and so the website here, uh, you can sort of drill down and get additional details as it relates uh, to the uh, opportunities that are presented here. Alrighty, uh, any questions or thoughts as it relates uh, to funding opportunities? Uh, and if you, you happen to come across any additional funding opportunities, uh, please feel free to share them. Um, one of the things that uh, we found out, uh, and, and Stephen uh, was on the call earlier, but uh, it, it turns out that uh, Stephen's company was able to respond uh, to a, a server opportunity a couple months ago. Uh, and so, and that was by way of, of, of an incidental mention uh, in an earlier general meeting earlier this year. So I wanted to sort of keep that going because this may be uh, of interest to folks uh, that are part of our uh, healthcare community here uh, on Hyperledger. Uh, questions or thoughts? Oh. Hi, Wendy. This is Anthony. Um, oh, good, good morning, Anthony. Uh, this is uh, my second meeting, so I'm just trying to learn. But you mentioned about the use cases that you're the work group that you're working on. Yes, um, I'm at the front line of healthcare. I'm a healthcare provider. Um, I was wondering if um, there's an opportunity to connect and try to see if we can uh, discuss some of the opportunities or how I can participate if possible. That would be fantastic. Yeah, right, I'll reach out to you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Anthony, for that. And yeah, very, very, uh, very much uh, appreciated. So thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, and then uh, really lastly, for, for any new business, I don't have anything new necessarily uh, to bring up uh, today. Uh, but I always uh, keep an open uh, question here, which is really if there's anything that you'd like uh, to talk about or topics that you'd like to table as, as they relate to the, uh, the HC SIG, this, this group, uh, feel free to let me know uh, and I'd be happy to, to facilitate and make, make that happen. Um, Offhand, I'm trying to think of uh, anything new that's been happening. Um, uh, my, my background is in kidney care and I think I may have mentioned this uh, at, at the last meeting. We had a, a significant announcement uh, by President Trump at the beginning of, of July as it relates to kidney care. And so this is something that we're, we're, we're following very closely. Um, that's through uh, HHS and it's called the Advancing American uh, Kidney Health. Uh, and so that, that, uh, the driver for that is to, to, to bring down the cost of kidney care, particularly as it relates to dialysis and kidney transplant. Uh, for those of you that may not be completely familiar, uh, the way that uh, our government operates uh, through HHS is uh, CMS. CMS runs uh, Medicare and Medicaid, but Medicare uh, is uh, uh, provided to, uh, to persons in renal failure, which means uh, dialysis treatments are covered uh, through Medicare, uh, as well as the first three years of uh, kidney transplant. And uh, I believe, if I recall correctly, um, about one fifth of the total budget allocated for uh, Medicare goes to, uh, to kidney care. And so they're looking at ways to offset the cost of that. Uh, so this is significant to, to in the kidney care space. And of course, I'm always thinking about ways to, to uh, apply blockchain technologies to solving some of the problems in the kidney care space. Uh, but if there's anything else uh, that, that you have an interest in, feel free to let me know. And like I said, we'd, we'd, I'd be happy to find a way to facilitate that, uh, highlight that. Of course, we can also use Listserv or Rocket Chat as ways to communicate that to, uh, to membership as well. Okay, uh, any other thoughts or questions? So uh, our next meeting is going to be in two weeks, um, and that's on uh, September 6th. And I'm going to jump ahead to our draft. I think we have a speaker. I think that might be, yeah. So that's going to be Tori. 
uh, and it's Senai Wendy. Oh. Is that correct? Senai. Senai. Okay, perfect. Okay, so that is in two, that is in two weeks. So Tori will be our, our guest speaker. Uh, she is founder publisher of Blockchain in Healthcare Today, which is a great uh, publication. In fact, I think Wendy, you're associated with that now. No, um, not with that journal, but with um, Frontiers in Blockchain. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Thank you for the clarification. Yes, thank you. Um, as well, uh, Tori uh, is uh, uh, dr driving the Converge to, uh, to Accelerate conference, which we talked about earlier, which, which Wendy is talking at. Uh, and so it'll be really great conversation uh, with Tori because uh, she really has kind of a, a pulse on a lot of the media that's happening as it relates to uh, blockchain technology and healthcare. So, so that'll be in, in two weeks. Uh, so we'll have our special guest in two weeks, and that'll be Tori. Already, uh, any other thoughts? Rich, one last, yes. Yeah, one last question, and uh, apologies if you have covered this already. Uh, but the but the use cases for that uh, Wendy is leading, and then there are the use cases for uh, the various subgroups. I'm curious if we have a mechanism to prevent the duplication or actually encourage collaboration between the two, or are these not related at all? So, uh, can I give an answer? Yeah, go ahead, Dennis. Yeah, sure. Yeah, uh, it's it's a wonderful uh, point, a fair point. Uh, surely we are also cooperating with Wendy, and uh, we I, we have already guidelines and feedbacks from Wendy in in in, in, uh, in the definition of our use case. Uh, the thing is. Uh, it's also a, a collaboration between different individuals. So it, it's a mixture of different experiences. And uh, Wendy's work is very much welcome. I have already read uh, from her side uh, different feedbacks, and I really appreciate it. Yeah, and, and I'll, let, I'll let Wendy address this, but I'll just add uh, that really what Wendy and her team are doing is they're developing best practices as it relates to use cases. Uh, and they're using specific use cases to, to sort of demonstrate that. Uh, so, but, 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 and the, the intent of that would be, of course, to, to share that. Uh, but I think, uh, Wendy, uh, you want to talk a little bit more about, uh, I think you touched on this, uh, some of the use cases that you're looking to develop initially. Yeah, um, I'm afraid I can't remember them all off the top of my head, but um, some of the use cases involve uh, drug supply chain, credentialing, <sighs> I, but, but, I'm sorry that I can't remember them. No, no, and I, I, I feel bad. I don't remember either, and I, I ought to. But, so, but, but the point, I think, is that uh, your choice of use cases are independent of the subgroups, but, uh, but the, the, the intent of the work that's being done is really to, to provide sort of a best practices approach. And, in fact, you have this really outstanding uh, 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 PDF uh, file. Uh, oh, yeah. That is an is really a great resource. In fact, I ought to push that to the to the wiki so that's a lot more visible. That's great. Uh, yeah, we've sent it out periodically. It's an article by Horst Trebelmeyer. It was published in Frontiers mm -hmm. for Blockchain and uh, in May. And the topic is about um, the difference between uh, the different levels of evidence and science and use cases. And he describes the differences between use cases and case studies very eloquently. And ah, our group has continued right. to push toward case studies so that we can meet the evidence-based practice standard that many academic organizations are requesting. I see. Yeah. That, and, that makes total sense. And I could I could tell you I'll just I'll just say yeah that that Troublemeyer paper is really a great read I mean you know <laughs> I don't I don't go out of my way to say how great uh, white papers are but this really was very well done and it's it's just a really really interesting read it's one of these things where you read it you go wow now I actually can make use uh, better use of understanding what the definition of use case is because it's so well well presented. That that makes sense, and I'm going to look at uh, look it up. Also, I think it answered my question. Uh, I think I was just going at the superficial terminology of just use cases. But if we, you know, if we have work that we are doing to essentially create a framework, like you said, best practices, how best can we define something? That obviously really 
helps our research and work too. And uh, I'm sorry if I didn't mean to, I hope I did not derail the conversation. It's, I attended this one at a rather short notice and I'll, I'll read up more and and create my depth to as to the work that we are doing with the subgroup. Uh, no, it's a, it was a great question, uh, and it's just a reminder to me that we probably need to get that Tribblemeyer paper more prominently uh, uh, posted up on the wiki. I know we have it uh, in the uh, uh, out on the Google Docs site, uh, but I'm thinking, uh, Wendy, maybe we, if it's okay, we can maybe post it up on the wiki, uh, and and perhaps oh, yeah. Wendy, uh, uh, Ankit, is there a way you can contact Wendy, and she'll maybe she can hand. Send you a copy of, of that trouble a, a link to the to the trouble iron paper just so sure. that it, it is also um, open access and so ideally what we should do is provide a link to the publisher's website so that yeah. they can also track the number of downloads yeah that's what I was thinking right 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 okay okay well very good uh, Anka, that was a very good very good question and uh, I'm glad uh, yeah I'm glad you, you you spoke up on that point because uh, I think uh, the work that Wendy and her team are doing is really uh, spot on and uh, really helps to define best practices uh, in the use case space and that trouble Meyer paper is you know is really very valuable in this context okay Great. thank you any, any other questions or thoughts All right, well, we're gonna end just a little bit early today, but uh, thank you so much for your participation. Can you guys, yeah. Hey, can you guys hear me? This is Erica. I'm just walking through the airport, so. I'm oh, hi, Erica, yeah. Hey, um, I was trying to interject earlier. I just wanted to announce that um, I'm the lead ambassador for blockchain and healthcare today for the Colorado region. And so I'll be um, kind of recruiting other healthcare providers to develop, uh, develop a community to um, just kind of bring some awareness and education around blockchain and healthcare and also um, some awareness around the journal Blockchain and Healthcare Today, which um, Tori Weaves will be presenting uh, next week or in two weeks at the next meeting. So I just wanted to make that announcement. Oh, excellent. Well, congratulations, Erica, and great great to know that. Thanks very much for the announcement. Uh, yeah, and uh, you know, one of the things that Tori and I talked about uh, a, a while ago in preparation for uh, her presentation in two weeks is finding a, a way to better sort of integrate uh, some of the work that's being done here uh, through the HC SIG membership and uh, some of the stuff that, that Tori's been doing as in terms of sort of media resources uh, in the in the blockchain space, and so it'd be great that we sort of you know maybe you could help facilitate that sort of integration uh, and and maybe education in some respects uh, of of how we might best use to make be, make best use of of the resources that that Tori has put to us. Yeah, that'd be my pleasure. I would, I would certainly be available for that. Excellent. Well, well, thank you for that, Erica. Thank you. Alrighty. Uh, well, if there's nothing more, uh, thank you so much for participating today. Uh, have a great weekend and we will see you in two weeks. Great. Bye everyone. Bye. Thanks, thank you everyone. Thank you everyone. Have a great weekend.